with U.S. companies and researchers leading the way. We are on the threshold of virtually unlimited reserves of energy, including from traditional fuels, LNG, clean coal, next generation nuclear power, and gas hydrate technologies. At the same time, I'm proud to report the United States is among the cleanest air and drinking water on Earth. And we're going to keep it that way. And we just came out with a report that, at this moment, it's the cleanest it's been in the last 40 years. We're committed to conserving the majesty of God's creation and the natural beauty of our world. Today, I'm pleased to announce the United States will join One Trillion Trees Initiative being launched here at the World Economic Forum. One Trillion Trees. And in doing so, we will continue to show strong leadership in restoring, growing, and better managing our trees and our forests. This is not a time for pessimism. This is a time for optimism. Fear and doubt is not a good thought process because this is a time for tremendous hope and joy and optimism and action. But to embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. They are the heirs of yesterday's foolish fortune tellers, and I have them, and you have them, and we all have them. And they want to see us do badly, but we don't let that happen. They predicted an overpopulation crisis in the 1960s, mass starvation in the 70s, and an end of oil in the 1990s. These alarmists always demand the same thing, absolute power to dominate, transform, and control every aspect of our lives. We will never let radical socialists destroy our economy, wreck our country, or eradicate our liberty. America will always be the proud, strong, and unyielding bastion of freedom. In America, we understand what the pessimists refuse to see, that a growing and vibrant market economy focused on the future lifts the human spirit and excites creativity strong enough to overcome any challenge, any challenge by far. The great scientific breakthroughs of the 20th century, from penicillin to high-yield wheat to modern transportation and breakthrough vaccines have lifted living standards and saved billions of lives around the world. And we're continuing to work on things that you'll be hearing about in the near future, that even today, sitting here right now, you wouldn't believe it's possible that we have found the answers. You'll be hearing about it. But we have found answers to things that people said would not be possible, certainly not in a very short period of time. But the wonders of the last century will pale in comparison to what today's young innovators will achieve because they are doing things that nobody thought even feasible to begin. We continue to embrace technology, not to shun it. When people are free to innovate, millions will live longer, happier, healthier lives. For three years now, America has shown the world that the path to a prosperous future begins with putting workers first, choosing growth, and freeing entrepreneurs to bring their dreams to life. For anyone who doubts what is possible in the future, we need only look at the towering achievements of the past. Only a few hundred miles from here are some of the great cities of Europe, teeming centers of commerce and culture. Each of them is full of reminders of what human drive and imagination can achieve. Centuries ago, at the time of the Renaissance, skilled craftsmen and laborers looked upwards and built the structures that still touch the human heart. To this day, some of the greatest structures in the world have been built hundreds of years ago. In Italy, the citizens once started construction on what would be a 140-year project. The Duomo of Florence, incredible, incredible place. While the technology did not yet exist, 
to complete their design. City fathers forged ahead anyway, certain that they would figure it out someday. But these citizens of Florence did not accept limits to their high aspirations. And so the Great Dome was finally built. In France, another century-long project continues to hold such a grip on our hearts and our souls that even 800 years after its construction, when the Cathedral of Notre Dame was engulfed in flames last year, such a sad sight to watch, unbelievable sight, especially for those of us that considered it one of the great, great monuments and representing so many different things. The whole world grieved. Through her sanctuary now stands scorched and charred, and a sight that's hard to believe. When you got used to it, to look at it now, hard to believe. But we know that Notre Dame will be restored, will be restored magnificently. The great bells will once again ring out for all to hear, giving glory to God and filling millions with wonder and awe. The cathedrals of Europe teach us to pursue big dreams, daring adventures, and unbridled ambitions. They urge us to consider not only what we build today, but what we will endure long after we are gone. They testify to the power of ordinary people to realize extraordinary achievements when united by a grand and noble purpose. So together, we must go forward with confidence, determination, and vision. We must not be timid or meek or fearful, but instead, we must boldly seize the day and embrace the moment. We have so many great leaders in this room, not only business leaders, but leaders of nations. And some are doing such a fantastic job. We work together very closely. We will draw strength from the glories of the past, and we will make greatness our common mission for the future. Together, we will make our nations stronger, our countries safer, our culture richer, our people freer, and the world more beautiful than ever before. Above all else, we will forever be loyal to our workers, our citizens, and our families. The men and women who are the backbone of our economies, the heart of our communities, and the soul of our countries. Let us bring light to their lives one by one and empower them to light up the world. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless your countries, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>